Hi, my name is Edith. I'm a third year PhD student studying visual neuroscience from McGill University. Today, the topic of my talk is why does mouse vision matter? Ladies and gentlemen, please take a moment. Imagine you are drawing a house in your mind. Where would you start? I will start from drawing the lines on the roof. Gradually, the lines will extend to the lower parts of the corner and the walls to create the shape of a house. Lastly, I will add a color to complete it. Why is this picture? This is how the vision is created. When we see an image, the image information is sent to the back of our eyes in the retinas and it's been processed in each stage of in, in our brain. They will, for, they will arrive in the first era for the simple processing of lines and edge information, and then it's forwarded to the next for the corners and angle information. And then it's been sent to the next for the color processing. Eventually, it will arrive in the uh, final destination, which is the infrotemporal cortex responsible for uh, more complex objects and facial recognition. So the image we see is uh, composed of the uh, inf information that is processed from simple to more complex ways involving different aspects of vision. This graph itself, however, is not enough to explain how vision works. The brain is more complicated than what we have ever thought. Under the skull, there's intricate wiring between the cells and circuitries that they interact with each other at different level of the task performance. Beyond the primary visual cortex, where the first era that the information arrives, the brain areas that are associated with the object and the facial information are less understood. We are like the blind man touching the elephant, only locating each body part at once, yet to discover the story as a whole. We wouldn't fully unlock the understanding of uh, visual processing unless we sort out what's happening with these cells and circuitries. Neuroscientists have long been keen to look into the brain activities that produce the visual object recognition behavior. They use um, the humans and non-humans primate subjects for studying visual object recognition behavior. They legion the brain areas of interest and use the traditional recording and imaging techniques to study the behavior changes upon lesioning. Despite a good amount of research results produced by these uh, approaches, these approaches did not enable us with further understanding of visual processing. Each of these techniques do suffer from a certain aspect of limitations. It was not until the second half of the late 20th centuries. Inventions of modern technologies have made our sci-fi dream to come true. The brain controlling scenarios seen in the movies are now available in a few of the contemporary neuroscience labs. Thanks to advancement of molecular biology, the gene-modified animals um, become available for neuroscientists to start to look into the cell type-specific uh, brain activities. We can uh, now better manipulate the neuronal activities in vivo, meaning in the living animals. We can then use uh, the light and drug technologies that work with the sensors that are delivered in the animal's brains to activate and inactivate the brain regions of interest. We also enjoy the state-of-the-art microscopes that allow us to uh, monitor the cellular activities of the animals while the animals are half fixed, but they are fully awake engaging in a uh, behavior task. In particular, the transgenic mice become the most uh, uh, popular animal models for the studies in neuroscience. Since each of these uh, cutting edge tools is most restricted in the mice object, Having these uh, brain controlling and monitoring systems, now neuroscientists discover something not known before. For example, primary visual cortex was used to be known as a uh, edge and line detector, and now it's been found with the reward properties, which is mind-blowing. The similar scenario occurs in the hippocampus. Hippocampus was known to be a a center for uh, navigation and memories, and now it's been found with um, the, e the emotional properties. So all of these new findings have been discovered with these uh, new technologies and in the transgenic animal models. Back to our questions. 
in our lab, we are interested in um, understanding what each cell does in the visual cortex for the visual properties. In neuroscience, it's been hotly debated how um, the neurons encode for pro functional properties. It's a coding strategy like uh, the grandmother cell in which um, individual neurons have preference to specific faces like the face of your grandmother or the face of Jennifer Aniston. Or is the coding strategy like groups of neurons that are widely distributed around the full cortex that are specialized to uh, certain features of an object? So having these uh, cutting edge tools, now we can, um, we can start to look into what is represented in each um, cell across the visual areas, and we can have a better understanding of how the brain interprets an object. Now it comes to a question. To study visual object recognition in mice, we wonder whether mice vision is as capable as primates. So in our lab, we designed a behavior task in which I measured um, the mice vision to recognize an, um, 3D printed objects in an open arena. Interestingly, our test results discovered that mice were able to visually discriminate an object, while the blind control group were not able to do so. So having these promising results in my next stage of my experiments, I will be manipulating uh, the neuronal activities of the, a mice and also to, um, record the cellular activities uh, when the animals were engaged in a task. So in these projects, we will be uh, pinpointing the brain areas and the cellular groups that are associated with the visual object recognition behavior. We will also be establishing uh, mice as a, a, a have effective animal model for the studies in uh, visual neuroscience. Hopefully, having this model, um, we will be guided to identify the therapeutic targets for the visual impaired to extend the benefits to the larger societies. So next time when you see a scientist using mice to study something complicated for the brain, don't be too surprised. Mice are possibly to afford more takes away for the understanding of the brains than what we have ever known. Thank you for your time. <laughs>